Hey there, it's Johnny J here and welcome to another episode of The 3C Show and as always I am super excited to be here. Today on the show we're continuing our deep dive into Lightroom masking and we're going to be talking all about intersecting. I mentioned it a little bit in our last video and I had heaps of questions about it so I thought I'd explain how intersection works in the masking tool in Lightroom uh, and I'll give you three examples of how to use it in your landscape and nature photography. All right, let's jump straight into Lightroom and get this show started. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right, first image here. And you'll remember I spoke a little bit about this as I mentioned in the last video, but if I go up here to my masking tool, you'll see this one here. And if I click on him, uh, and then what I'm gonna actually do is just go over a radial filter and I'm gonna stick it in the middle of the screen. We've got our cool blue overlay there. And what I'm going to do is just make the exposure really crazy. Turn the feather amount uh, down. Actually, that's the wrong one. Let's turn that feather amount down. So we've got a big black circle, right? -o? <laughs> and it looks terrible. It's a big black moon. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I think that's moon. Mm, I don't think that works. Anyway, so let's do it. So to get to intersection and to explain how this works, all right, so to get to intersection, there's two ways to do it. If you hold down the options key on a Mac or alt key on a Windows and you'll see that uh, w when you've clicked on your mask tool in the masking panel the add and subtract buttons will actually turn into another button called intersect so that is the alt key on Windows and the options key on Mac okay the other way to get to it is if you go to the side of your masking here you'll see these three little buttons okay if you click those you can also get to intersect with and then you can choose whatever you want to intersect this uh, initial mask with. So to think about intersection, this is the way I think of it. You've made a, a initial selection and then inside of that initial, initial selection, you want to refine it even further to something else that's inside it, okay? So for example, if I go up here and hold down my option key, click intersect, select the brush tool, you'll notice as I start to paint here, my selection disappears, okay? But as I go inside of that selection, you can see I'm starting to brush back just a little bit of that initial selection. So what I've done by intersecting with, with uh, intersecting the initial mask with the brush tool is I'm able to paint back just little parts of that initial selection, okay? So just think of it as a selection inside a selection, okay? <laughs> I think that makes sense. All right, so let's delete that because that was terrible, whatever that adjustment was, Johnny. We'll delete that one. All right, actually, I'm gonna go back to my red overlay. By the way, just a quick little bonus tip here, the overlay, uh, you can change the color by clicking this little button. So over here, you can click, turn the overlay on and off. That shows you where the mask is. But if you click this little button here, it brings up this color picker and you can actually change the color of uh, your overlay. And um, you've also got this opacity slider here. So if you want it, you know, darker or lighter, uh, sorry, darker or lighter, you can move this opacity slider around as well. All right, let's close that. Let's get into the tip. Otherwise, I'll just keep giving tips before we actually get into the show. <laughs> when well, we're here to actually learn. All right, let's do it. So let's uh, let's delete this mask here, and let's go back, and we're going to create our initial mask. So this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a sky selection, and boom, there's our sky selection. And actually, I think I turned the opacity of the overlay right down. So there we go. There's our sky selection. Actually, I might put it back to somewhere there. Yeah, that's good. About 70% will have the opacity. Um, so there's our sky selection, it's pretty good. And you remember last time I said, you know, if we go ahead and start to pull that exposure down and do our usual things, we add that little bit of clarity and a little bit of dehaze and, and maybe we want to just warm up the sky a touch here. So you can see you get this ugly transition here and uh, we really want to avoid that because it looks unnatural. And not only that, um, because of our initial sky selection, you'll find where you have areas like this here, uh, you'll start to get some halos around them as well, okay? So we definitely want to try and avoid that. So while Lightroom did a great job with our initial sky selection, what we wanna do is bring up our masking panel again. And, uh, and oh wow, that yellow looks terrible. For some reason I bumped that slider up to the wazoo. <laughs> All right, let's bring up our masking slider again. 
And what I'm gonna do is actually zoom out on the picture a little bit here. And uh, we're gonna go to our uh, intersect tool. So we click on the mask, we hold down the options key again, we go intersect. This time we're gonna intersect with a linear gradient, okay? And then I'm just gonna draw my linear gradient over top um, to soften that transition down onto that horizon line, okay? And if we turn on the show overlay for that, you'll see when it loads up, you'll see that we've now made a gradient selection inside of our initial sky selection, and that's really important, okay? But what I wanna actually do, this is another powerful thing, is I wanna actually have the gradient on a bit of an angle, because we do have this light coming in here, and I don't wanna darken that down, I don't wanna affect that too much, I still want that light to come in, but I still want that soft transition on the horizon line there, and I still want a soft transition around the top of our rock, because that's going to eliminate that halo effect. So if we turn off that overlay now, you'll see, uh, if I zoom in here a little bit, you'll see we've got a much better transition. You know, we could probably darken things down, a little bit of exposure, a little bit more, pump up the contrast a little bit more, you know, probably a little bit more dehaze there, just to get a bit more punch in that sky. But you'll see it looks a lot more natural. So if I was to turn that linear gradient off, and you can see they've got the halo back, ooh, terrible, back on. What a difference that makes, what a difference. So, yep, that's the first thing, uh, first little tip I have for you. All right, moving on to the next image. Let's do it here. All right, we've got this lovely black cockatoo. Now, I want to enhance the yellow part there. I wanna bring some saturation, some color into that area, okay? So I, I reckon if I was to just go ahead and do a color range selection on that, it's probably going to bleed over into the background there a fair bit, and it has, you can see, and even if we turn down the amount, we're still gonna have issues because there's yellow tones from the light uh, landing on all the leaves and that in the background, okay? So that's not gonna work. So what we wanna do is hit subject selection, and let's see how Lightroom goes here. It's done a really good job of selecting that subject, okay? And then we're gonna go up here, click in our masking panel again, hold down the option key, click intersect with a color range. And now I'm gonna select that yellow color. And let's just see here how Lightroom goes. Oh, that's not bad, but up here we can adjust, we can refine that. You know, we've got this slider here called refine. And if I move that to the right, it's gonna help feather out that area slightly, because I don't want a hard transition on the edges there. Everything you do, you know, every adjustment you do, you just want to make it nice and subtle, okay? So I think that's made a lovely selection there. I'll just zoom in on the cocky so we can see what's exactly going on. That's a nice selection there, that, that yellow spot on his head. Now, what I want to do is just bring some saturation into that. Let's just saturate it up a bit, and bring that color up. Maybe I just want to brighten that a little bit as well, just a little bit there. And um, yeah, you can see, let's do the before and after. So before, after, before, after, yeah. So that's good, it's just bring after. It's just bringing a little bit of yellow color into there and it's just a great way, you know, with that subject selection, then refining it further with the intersection, it's helping make that adjustment uh, way easier. And I could do the same thing with the redness around his eye, maybe I wanted to bring that up as well. So. Great, great use there of intersection with a wildlife shot. All right, let's have a look at this fella. We've got the rolling hills. I'll just zoom out here so you can get a look at the image. We've got the rolling hills here. We've got some uh, really greatly, <laughs> awesomely placed cows. I don't know how that was set up, but anyway, this is quite an old photo that I just reprocessed. But um, yeah, so say I wanted to enhance this light. You know, say I wanted to bring some more light into this area here. You know, but I don't want it to affect the shadows, okay? So what I can do here, again, go up to our masking tool, go down to a, a radial filter, okay? And I'm just gonna make a nice big radial filter here. And you can see I've zoomed way out on my photograph because I just want this to imitate that light that's coming in there on the left, okay? I also wanna make sure that my feathering up here is feathered all the way out, okay? So I'm gonna turn the feathering way out so it's a beautiful soft transition coming through and I can make this go nearly all the way through the scene to be honest. So I just really wanna enhance that area. I may not want it to touch too much on the foreground, 
because I don't want to brighten that up too much, but I think that's that's a really good selection. All right, so what I'm going to do is just actually bump the exposure up a touch there, and I'm just going to add some more yellow and a tiny bit of magenta there, just add a little bit more light through that area. So let's turn that on and off, on, off, sorry, <laughs> on, <laughs> off, on, off. On. So you can see we've enhanced that light there. We've made a brighter part to the top of the scene there Okay, we also you know a little bonus tip here um, Up here in the histogram if I t click that little Triangle there that's going to tell me if I get any clipping So if I was to turn that exposure up a little bit more you can see I'm starting to get some clipping in that area That's what that red you can see is so I don't want that so somewhere there is a good place But the problem we've got is is if you zoom in we're really starting to affect those shadow areas, okay? So naturally that light wouldn't shine into those shadows, okay? So we want to be able to remove some of that light from the shadows and just apply it to the highlights, okay? So again, we can use the intersecting tool just to select those highlight areas. So if I go back up here to my tool panel and I'll just zoom in a little bit more. Again, hit the option key. We're on our original mask and I'm gonna go intersect with a luminosity range, okay? And then what you have with the luminosity range, I know I spoke about this, I think a little bit in the last video, but you have these two square sections, okay? Which basically select the range that you want to only be affected. Okay, and then we have these little triangles here that help with the feathering, all right? So what I'm gonna actually do is turn the overlay on just so I've got a good idea of what I'm affecting here. And you can see as I start to pull this down into the highlights and the lighter mid-tone area, um, we're getting some nice feathering here on our radial filter, but it's not, it's not going to lighten into those shadows too much. And that's exactly what we're after, okay? But you want to make sure you've got a nice soft transition however you do it. So, you know, you can see we've got a nice soft transition uh, through that area. And you can see even on some of the trees and that there that it's really holding back, you know, that radial filter out of those shadows, which is exactly what we want. Because there's no way the backside of this tree here with the light behind it would have any, you know, this little tree here would have any light on it. So when we're, when we're trying to enhance that light, it's a perfect way to do that. That's all I had guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope that explains how Intersect works in Lightroom. It really has opened up an amazing amount of localized, localized adjustments we can do and the possibilities really are just endless. The fact that you can create a mask out of any of the tools and intersect them with any of the same tools just opens up this world of possibilities of adjustments that you can do in Lightroom uh, with, with masking. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you really enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, share this with your photography friends. That really means a lot. That's how you can help me out and help me grow my channel. And, uh, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, I'm out. Take it easy.